Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for having me to make this presentation. I will present my personal perspective about um, how the web impacted and changed my life and how I could contribute with the web development in Brazil. So starting from the beginning, I was born uh, in the end of the 70s in Sao Paulo, Brazil, in a suburb of Sao Paulo, Brazil. This is a typical landscape of the area with uh, kids playing on the streets and uh, old trucks among them, uh, old cars among them. And uh, when I was around 11 years old, the Brazil uh, made uh, the first internet connection between the FAPESP, the Sao Paulo Research Foundation, and the US Energy Science Network. So at the beginning, the internet was uh, only for the academic environment. Then uh, in 1994, I started working uh, as an office boy, so I need to let my long hair back to use a uniform and a, a blue tie to start working because it's not so easy to afford to uh, in in this uh, scenario. And then uh, at this time, I had never I had I never had contact with computers at all. So uh, and considering in the same year the commercial internet was available in Brazil, so they start to they launch the commercial services for internet uh, at this time. This work for me was very important because um, I had to, sometimes I had to use the secretary desk to answer her phone calls. And then I could use the computer to learn a little bit about the MS-DOS software like uh, uh, Printmaster, uh, Lotus 1, 2, 3. And uh, I, may, I became professional in, the, some, in creating birthday cards, uh, banners, and reports using dot matrix printers. And uh, I could all use the computer at the office because inflation in Brazil at this time was very high. So uh, it's impossible to have a computer at this time. So inflation started to decrease after 1994 uh, with uh, economical plan at this year. So finally, I could buy a computer, a computer similar to this one, uh, but uh, without modem and without internet because internet was still uh, expensive at this time. This is the, um, uh, a picture of the price of the internet in 1996. It costs around uh, 25 reais, that's the same as $25, for 10 hours per month and two megabit per second. So it was very expensive to use internet at home. In 1995, I started a university program uh, about arts and uh, digital digital content. So I learned since to format a flop disk and use computers to use soft graphic softwares like uh, Photoshop, CorelDRAW, and uh, Director. And uh, at the end of the course, I remember that we got the first contact with the web, the first classes about the web. And even the teacher, teachers, they didn't know about the web. I remember one teacher that told me that the alt attribute was used as a tooltip for images. So when you hover an image, you can see the alt attribute, like the title attribute. But it, it was not a HTML feature. It was a Internet Explorer bug at the time. So I took time to realize that was uh, a really bug. When I left the university, I made my own uh, website. It's a website about the prophecies and the end of the world prophecies in 2000, 2000 uh, using HTML3. And uh, it was interesting because there were not so many content about this on the web. And the, some uh, magazines and newspapers uh, published my website as a source of content about these things. It's interesting because it became like a laboratory for me, especially to understand, to learn uh, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So I took one code to create this Ouija board that you uh, type some uh, questions and uh, the JavaScript start to answer for you. And uh, But all, it was all in English, so I need to bring this to Portuguese. So it's quite complicated because if you answer a question using the verb to be like, uh, uh, is she my friend? The answer are only yes or not. So I need to, uh, to make some adjustments to consider the Portuguese language for this uh, script. It was very fun. 
And at the same time, we're facing the first browser wars between uh, Internet Explorer and Netscape. So it was quite complicated to develop the website uh, that's running perfectly in both browsers. And they had to use the buttons best viewed in Internet Explorer or Netscape. Into, in 1998, I, wor I started working as a web designer in a company. Uh, this company has a, a quite strange business model because they usually sell design, sold the designs and the websites, uh, and the customers can pay as they want, like uh, pizza and bicycles and uh, a lot of things. And uh, this is how we developed pages at this time. We use the Photoshop and create a big image and slice it, all these images and put in tables in the early 2000. And at the same time, the, there were the, the tre another trend that was the flash intro websites. So all the clients wanted like a high for you intro website, like uh, spinning and moving and with uh, a lot of sounds. And uh, I need to learn how to develop a website using flash. <laughs> <laughs> in 2004, I applied for a job position at NICBR, where I'm still working until today, and uh, for the webmaster position, just to update and uh, creating some websites there. And uh, at the same time, one important law in Brazil was launched, the first law that uh, mentioned about accessibility in websites, especially in government websites. So I decided to study a little bit about this, this new thing for me about the web standards and the web accessibility. So in 2008, W3C launched the WCAG 2. Uh, it was, I think, one of, one of the most important documents about web accessibility, if not the most important. So I started to study this uh, document and uh, I try to create a, a model to study. So I create a PowerPoint file with more than 900 slides to study all the techniques for web accessibility. So this is a, a, a small one with almost 800 slides. I didn't found the original one, but yeah, I think it's a, a crazy way, but it was good to, to learn and uh, understand how, to, how the accessibility works. In 2011, I was invited by the W3C Brazil office to join the W3C Brazil office, office manager to join the team to coordinate some uh, web accessibility projects there. Uh, this, invi this invitation was during one WWW in Hyderabad in 2011. And uh, I started to coordinate projects like uh, authorized translation for the WCAG into Brazilian Portuguese. This is the first uh, authorized, trans trans authorized translation uh, in Brazilian Portuguese and collaborating with in another loss uh, in Brazil. And I was part of the team who organized the WWW 2013 in Rio. I don't know if some of them were been there. I'll, do you remember the party there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Beatles and uh, Carnival, uh, Samba and Carnival, yeah. Yeah, and Caipirinhas, of course. <laughs> and then I could, um, uh, I could participate in some of these uh, important conferences uh, around the world. So uh, I was involved in another project, coordinating uh, some important projects in Brazil. Uh, one of them is um, a technical standard for accessibility in mobile apps in Brazil, it's totally in Portuguese and based on international uh, standards. And uh, another project that collects, uh, web, uh, collects websites under .gov.br uh, domain names and check compliance with web accessibility standards. Uh, this, pr this project was presented last year on W4A conference in Austin. And in 2020, I think 2020 to 2021, uh, I could uh, write my first, uh, I wrote my first book about the web accessibility, completely web accessible, about web accessibility. Um, the, the main objective to write this book was to create, to create a, a simple way to understand and learn about web accessibility without having to create a 900 slides 
PowerPoint. And in 2013, uh, 2023, I was selected as a standout professional about web accessibility in a um, web accessibility award leaders uh, performed in Brazil. So just to summarize, well, of course, the web was essential for my career. If, uh, if it was not the web, probably I would not be here to present uh, this, uh, start telling this story for you. Uh, I could help the local community, special, especially people who doesn't speak English to learn and understand more about the technical standards and especially for web accessibility. And uh, I think the seven years old boy with long hair, probably if she, if this guy had a, had the opportunity to have a, uh, to find a time machine and travel 30 years in the future, probably he would be happy to see this presentation here with the whole story. And thank you so much.